on this program. So welcome for another edition and this evening we have another figure of that kind or even bigger than the figures we have had on this show basing on how you watch him or how you know the person. He's an old boy of St. Henry's College, Chitovu, in Masaka. He's a senior politician in this country. He has headed one of the oldest political parties. He has been in the leadership circles of that party and he headed it for 25 years. Besides, he is a PhD holder. He has stood for presidency of this country in the 1980 and in 1996. So, He's really an icon. Join me, welcome Dr. Paul Kawanga Semo Gerere, with whom you're going to look at Uganda yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Doctor, we are so honored to have you on this show. You're welcome. Yes. How are you? C can I make two corrections? Yes, Doctor. Yes, I was at St. Henry's College, Chitofu, in 1944 in P5. P5 because there was no P6 the following year I transferred to Kisubi Primary School from there I went to St. Mary's College Kisubi where I did the junior secondary school and senior secondary school and where I was head prefect my final year so that should be corrected thank you so much the second one, in school. the second correction, mm. I am I, I'm called Dr. Simo Gilele, but that is honorary, okay. honorary causa uh, given to me by uh, my former school, Allegheny College in America. Okay. Those are the two corrections I want to. Okay. I read okay. somewhere and they were talking of a PhD in, in public administration and management. I went there, but not, no, I didn't finish because of uh, the war here. Yes, I, I had the, the MP there from Allegheny, I mean from uh, Maxwell School at, at uh, Syracuse University. But then the demands at home invited me and I, I, I left before the conclusion of my pre the presentation. But in the main, uh, later on I was given an honorary doctorate by Allegheny College where I had been for a year before. Okay, doctor, thank you for the corrections. Okay. But besides, how are you doing and how have you managed to keep yourself this strong and looking healthy at your age? The, yes. I want the young, the young people, people now, now to, to take, take that. that. Okay. Mm. I think I've got to be grateful to the Almighty God, to my parents, to my family, my close family and friends. I think that explains why I've been able to live up to 89 years and remain uh, more or less healthy, generally. Okay. Having good company, have me being naturally well endowed from the genes of my parents mm -hmm. <laughs> and being taken care of uh, in the schools I visited, I, I went to, the friends I had at school, the friends I've had uh, throughout my life, good people. I think that give, has given a good uh, environment. It has all contributed? Yes. To the, the good, good health you have, have up to now. now? I think so. I must believe you when you say so. Okay. That I've had good health. Doctor, Doctor when do you join the political, the political dance world in Uganda? I was always interested in uh, political developments in my country, even when I was at, at school. Uh, when I was, uh, uh, when I talk of p party politics, for instance, that brings me to Makerere, 1964, 19, 19, yes, 19, 1954, when the Democratic Party was formed, and uh, I was uh, at that time active because I'd been a chairman of Baganda Students Association at Makerere. And he was following what was going on in the country with a keen interest and good contacts. And I uh, was invited to be one of the people to sponsor for the formation of the Democratic Party in 1954. And 
Then I remained an active member since that time. Okay. Uh, 1956 is my first time to see Mr. Benedict Chiwaluka when he finished his law studies in England and uh, came back, was given reception, kind of a graduation party <laughs> here at Rubaga by the Democratic Party leadership then led by Matayo Mugwanya. And I was one of those uh, happily invited. And we met for the first time with Ben Chonoka. But I followed him uh, since, the, yes, since the uh, exile, the deportation uh, of uh, the then Kabako of Uganda, uh, Ebad Mutesa, in 1953, uh, which uh, caused a lot of concerns among us. Uh, particularly Baganda. I attended the meeting of the Buganda Lukiko when the uh, deportation order was read to the Lukiko of the Kabaka and uh, the governor then, Sir Andrew Cohen, uh, invited Buganda Lukiko to forget about Mutesa and uh, take the opportunity then given to elect a point, elect another, another king. And the, the governor then expected one of two choices, either to, to accept this invitation uh, to have another king and, re and retain the monarchy, or rebel. And they knew that people here could rebel. They had done so in 1949 when you had Bataka Bu. Uh, they thought they might, might they might rebel, and in the case of rebellion, the governor had made sure that uh, situated people were on the alert, military and police were ready to crush. To handle whoever would get to the streets. <laughs> and what happened? This this, this Lukiko uh, was inspired to choose neither of the two options. Doctor, you had the, the they, they never accepted mm. to choose another king, nor they nor to go into rebellion. Okay. They chose wisely to set up a committee to go to Britain and appeal against the decision mm. of the of their servant here, the governor. And when they went uh, to Britain. They are among other people, they made this law student, Ben Chonuka, mm. who was very helpful in uh, giving them legal advice mm. and leading them to meet legal experts. Where, 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 where after, and after that, they decided wisely to file a suit in the High Court here to challenge mm. the decision of the governor to deport uh, yeah, to do, yes, to, to remove from the kingship and deport him. Mm. It was a very interesting case, which eventually succeeded. The case su was, was succeeded. It was found that the governor had decided, had, had invoked the wrong article, and which had no such powers. And that led to the Kwakazu return. So this brought Ben Chonokai to the Sri the 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 the, 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 the language of everybody, including ourselves. Okay. And so when he came, it was very interesting for me to be able to see him. He had also heard about me, and we made, we made friends, and, and uh, that is what that that eventually culminated in two things. First of all, he's being elected president of the Democratic Party mm. in 1958 at Tororo, and he's inviting me to relinquish my job where I was teaching at St. Louis College Fort Porto, to relinquish my job and join him to work for independence of Uganda on a full-time basis without salary. How? So so that, that's when I started. Active politics. Mm. How would you describe the group of young people? Because I'm sure you were part of the groups that put up spirited struggles for Uganda's independence. What kind of groups were you? I rather would like to say, not group, but what were the reasons? 
1957, Ghana attained its independence. The first black African country, besides, of course, Sudan, which had earned its independence in 1956. But Ghana was particularly inspiring. And uh, the youth there, the students and so on, have played a big part in uh, the struggle for independence in Ghana. Mm. And that inspired many students in Africa. And uh, at Makere was not uh, an exception. Definitely. So, and I had uh, had a visit in Ghana, 1957, uh, as a member of the World University Service Committee, because I was uh, at that time uh, in charge of foreign relations of St. Augustine Society at Makere. And in that, by virtue of that, I was a member of the World University Service Committee in Uganda I, here. We were invited to Ghana, mm. and so I saw firsthand uh, the big names there, people in Ghana, Kuma, Santa Hene, and so on. So, well, Ghana uh, led, led, led the, the fight, and the uh, university at Makerere followed, and uh, we had presidents of different uh, or, or countries, at, at, uh, associations at Makerere. Mm. Who, who took up this, the, the, who, who became interested in, uh, uh, well, pronouncing their countries in favor of uh, independence. And Tanganyika was one. Tanganyika Association mm. uh, invited uh, Nyerere then, who was president of TAN, and he addressed us, urging uh, to take up the struggle for independence, for so freedom. So mostly you were elite groups of young people from universities? In this case, yes. at Makere, yes. Mm. And uh, besides Tanganyika, then there was a Kenya. So the Kenya Students Association, mm. uh, they also invited Tom Boyer, if you heard of him. He was a leading uh, fighter for independence in Kenya. So he came and he also addressed us. Mm. And I was now, uh, at that time, I was the president of the Uganda Students Association was called Yomusa, Uganda Makere Students Association, and it was my turn. It was a bigger challenge for me, because in Uganda there were more parties uh, which were already uh, formed, which had been formed, and all, 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 all of them uh, talking about fighting for independence. And uh, having not been given the background I've given you, it was easier for me to pick on him and I considered him, and I think rightly so, to be the best qualified among the Ugandan political leaders at that time. I invited him to come to Makerere to address us. And I can tell you it was a very, a very welcome visit. Uh, and it was his first ever to be at Makerere because he had not said at Makerere. I said in Lesotho before I went for law school in America, in, in Britain. You know, it was a challenge for him. If he didn't do well, <laughs> his fate would be sealed. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it, it was a successful, mobilized. Describe your struggle for independence. We have seen you trying to do a lot of things, here and outside Uganda, in many countries. But your struggle as the young people of the 1960s, 50s. to see you in 1950s, to see yeah. Uganda independent. Yes. How would you describe? that struggle of you, the young people of then, to see Uganda independent? Well, uh, Uganda, unlike... How is your difficult was it for you? I would say it was not so difficult because Uganda was a protectorate. It was saved the harsh colonial rule that prevailed in South Africa that prevailed in Kenya, right? So it was generally a uh, reasonable administration, but colonial. And uh, in my particular case, as a member of the Democratic Party, it was also not so bad because the Democratic Party believed in, uh, of course, truth and justice, believed in uh, winning freedom, 
independence, but by peaceful means. So there was not the risk that some youths elsewhere uh, encountered say in other countries uh, who immediately went the bush or whatever it is. It was done logically, it was done on the base of arguments uh, on paper, arguments in the newspaper, and we had good newspapers here. And uh, it was to demand the fundamental rights of the Africans yes. in an intelligent way. We, the whom, whomsoever we encountered, whether it was uh, lecturers, whether it was people in the newspapers, whether it was uh, governor's statements and so on, it was uh, an intellectual argument. You, you did not riot, you didn't demonstrate. We, we didn't. Uh, we didn't. We, we normally argued. Uh, yeah, we had rallies, we had meetings, yes. But uh, it was not violent, you know, in the Democratic Party. Of course, we, are, we, we met challenges from some other uh, organizations uh, subsequently. What were the challenges, Doctor? The challenges? Mm. Yes, if I have to be very quickly, I mean quick in analyzing the challenges, the, the biggest challenge for the Democratic Party, which I belong to, was a misunderstanding between, uh, between the leadership uh, uh, at Mengo, for instance, uh, and uh, the political leaders in the country who, who are aspiring for a national organizations, a national campaign. Therefore, creation of political parties under civilian leadership. And there was a misunderstanding because... Uh, Between the DP and the Meng establishment? Yes. Uh, not, not just DP, even other national parties. Especially following what had happened in, in Ghana. In Ghana, soon after independence, as you probably know, Nkrumah uh, uh, dissolved the, 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 the independence constitution and among other things abolished the monarchy. Traditional yes, and uh, that was sending the wrong message that probably by forming nat national political parties we have the same thing. Yeah, and it was very painful for me, if I recall, to see, for instance, Benny Chanuka and his followers, who included now the former leader of the DP, Matayo Mugwanya, who had been the leader of the, the committee that was set up to negotiate for the Kabaka's successful return, being classified as a threat to the monarchy in Uganda. <laughs> Uh, even myself, mm -hmm. who, who had been uh, uh, chairman of, of the Uganda Students Association at the university, right? With and 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 whose uh, ancestry came back really to Se the first Sewana, who was even an, an acting uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 king here uh, bef before he came to came on the throne. So it was very painful. Uh, and it, 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 it cost us uh, an election. But uh, otherwise, uh, we were comfortable in our argument, in our case, for uh, the right of the Ugandans, like other people elsewhere, to, to govern themselves and to govern democratically, constitutionally, and uh, treating everybody as equal. So I was very comfortable at that level. I didn't see anything wrong. And uh, we were paid off because eventually... You got the independence. Eventually, the colonial government agreed to have uh, an election and, uh, in 1961 with a commitment that if after that election there would be a party with an overall majority in, in parliament, then Uganda's uh, progress towards independence would be guaranteed. And we, we, we participated in that election, but suffering from a boycott 
uh, an, an, an unofficial but effective boycott uh, declared in Uganda here. That means we had low polls, uh, but we managed to get all, to, 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 to have an overall majority and eventually uh, move forward attaining self-government uh, in June of 1961. Uh, uh, no, eternal, eternal, no, no, self government came in February 1962, uh, but uh, previously we had the chief minister in, in June 1961. Uh, so that we achieved, but then there was uh, this uh, uh, settlement for independence politically, uh, where it was also a setback. Uh, given the misunderstandings I told you about our people in Mengo here, they formed uh, a cultural organization called the Kabakayika, yes. the King Alone. <laughs> and when it was formed, uh, it, we were now the targets, having been uh, in the government, having, having uh, uh, gone into the elections. Uh, without their sanction uh, and, and having become the, the government now between 1961 and 62 who are now the targets and our friends in the UPC uh, now changed their mind and uh, decided to work with, 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 with Mengo and, and they formed a, a coalition which later became a problem which, 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 which now uh, stripped the polls in the, coming, in the election of 1962 Right, uh, but subsequently, as you probably know, this uh, this uh, this coalition or alliance, which was uh, misconceived, uh, became a problem to both parties, and within two years, it fell apart. It fell apart, and uh, that brings me to a problem which we still have now. When, when uh, Obote realized that uh, his alliance with Kabaka Eka uh, was, was destined to fall apart, he moved quickly to stage what he would call a constitutional coup in 1966. See, uh, so that he could now remain in power, not on the basis or popular support nationwide, because he knew that by, by dissolving the alliance, the whole of Uganda would turn now against him. And if he called an election, which would have been the proper thing to do, he was sure to lose all the votes from here and would be defeated. Now, to, in order to, to remain in power, he changed the, the rules of the game. He staged a constitutional coup dissolved the, the Constitution of 1962, and he, en, he enlisted the military into politics to constitute his firm political base, all right? So with that coup of 19, Constitutional Coup of 1966, uh, the, the, the key figure now, the key ally of what became Idi Amin, and with that, and he was sure that Idi Amin would be in full control of the military. So he used the military to blackmail parliament, to regularize. He stay in power with the, the use of the military. Right, uh, to, to regularize the, 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 the constitution which he likes. Doctor, I want, to, uh, I want to take you to 1980. Briefly, but in the interest of time. Yes. Briefly, how? Why do you? What do you think caused turmoil within the governments of Uganda that came between 1962 and 1980? Because in that period alone, we had a number of them. What do you think caused the instant change of governments from 1962 up to 1980? What could have been the problem there? I think the problem is, I've touched it. Mm. I think, <laughs> Mr. Rukomo, uh, by enlisting the military to be the 
the, the, the staying power of the waiver was in, 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 uh, in leading the government, first with, with Obote. This was a, an, 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 a, a, a wrong ally to depend upon, to substitute for the popular will. So time came when Idi Amin and, and Obote fell apart. And that explains the collapse of Obote one regime in 1971. Uh, uh, then I mean, having the backing of the military to overthrow the government of Obote one. Yes, it served him for some time. But the time came in 1979 when that military backing him was not strong enough to defeat the challengers militarily. And that brings in a Moshi conference where people in exile and elsewhere gathered with the support of uh, President Nyerere who had, an ax who had his own fight against Amin because Amin had invaded Tanzania. Uh, so when all those forces joined and they mounted the military attack on Obote, on, 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 on Idi Amin, Amin's forces were not strong enough to safeguard him. So he had to flee, go to Saudi Arabia and so on. <laughs> All right. And now we come to 1980. Yes. You see, in 1980, Obote got into power largely because he had the backing of the military. I was a presidential candidate in that election. It's very painful to recall. But the real explanation that the military, the military, the military uh, with Paul Mwanga as chairman of the military council, with Tito Okero, with Basilio Okero, and many others, they, they saw Obote losing, and they, they counted on some international support for a, 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 a clever coup, right? A, 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 to falsify the, the results to ensure that, uh, that Obote uh, would, would emerge uh, right, winner, being sure that militarily the, the challengers, that Semogre and others, were not in a position to, 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 to challenge them militarily. It is that, that was the secret behind the, the, the stolen elections of 1980. But as before, as I've indicated in the case of Obote one, as before, that, that cooperation between Obote and Tito Okero and Basili Okero on the other, on, on, on the other side f fell apart right, with the challenges, with the military, with the, with the bush war by, 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 by Museveni, with the challenges on the ground, with the other forces, economic and otherwise, with the collapse of the support he got from international friends and so on. Uh, but uh, uh, could not now sustain. So the, 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 the problem between 62 up to 80 was involvement of the military? It, that is a, that's what I believe structurally. That was the problem. That the people in Uganda were denied the, the right, their fundamental right, to be the deciding factor as to who should be in government and how that government should run. And when uh, government comes out with its own uh, wise uh, judgments, uh, visions, and so on, and doesn't count on 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 the support or and understanding of the of the, the citizenry, it, it invites the military to suppress the people. And then stay in power, and 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 at and at, 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 when you do that, as we are, uh, the case of Uganda demonstrates very well, the time comes when this friendship collapses, and therefore change the government collapses. Doctor, is it true you had won the 1980 elections? I believe it. Why? I believe it because the secretary of the electoral commission. 
telephoned me to congratulate me upon our victory. I believe because of the data we received, wherever it was possible to receive the data, it all showed that the DP was winning. I believe it because of the reaction of the military, the military, the, the military council, who were at that time backing, backing Obote. When they saw everybody celebrating and so on, they, they, uh, they had to stop it. So they, 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 they invited us, they threatened us, uh, and, they, and, uh, and, uh, and so on. And I believe it because under the circumstances, the returning officers were stopped by, by, by uh, pronouncement, were stopped from declaring the results and submitting everything to the military council chaired by Paulo Mwanga. And that is where the forgery took place. Why did you choose to just sit back as the DP that had won and your victory had been taken away? Yes, Today sir. Today people go to court and things like that. Yes, I, I have told you the history of the Democratic Party and myself. We believe in a peaceful, more, uh, peaceful approach. We don't believe in uh, fighting. We don't believe in killing people for power. We believe in arguing our case as best as we can and convincing people and having a peaceful change. Was that appropriate at the time? Yes, and it paid. We, we had meetings here. When, the, when this decision was made, there was a lot of pressure. Even before the elections, when it was seen that uh, the arrangements for the elections were not uh, as, as uh, good as they should be to ensure a, f a free and fair election. We had debates about it, whether to participate in the elections or to stage a boycott. And um, I, when I look back at what we decided, I think it was, I have no regret for it. And we had friends, even internationally, and we, were, we, we believed it was better to participate, even if there were force here and there. It was better for, for us to participate. It was better for people of Uganda to express themselves and, uh, and, and go on. So we, we decided to, to participate uh, after debating democratically in, in our structures and agreeing. And, and uh, when we, the results were announced, again we debated. We had a, we had a national uh, we had the, the, the National uh, Council meeting uh, here near Dubaga. We invited all our leaders from all over Uganda. And we, dis we, di we debated that issue. Should we participate? Should we go into parliament, those who are elected? Or should we boycott parliament, right? It was hotly debated, very serious matter. And eventually, democratically, as a party, we decided to participate under protest, and we went. We participated in the legislature under protest. Okay. And and uh, we used that time to really advance the case for Uganda uh, far and wide. We even enlisted uh, a lot of international support, which the DPR or any other party have never had uh, before. And uh, and the culmination was a, 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 a colloquium by the Christian Democrat International here in 1984. Thank you so much, Doctor. Mm. We are taking a very short break on return. Mm. <clears throat> You'll give us a picture of how you ended up working with the UPM, NRA, later NRM, as minister. And why, again, you said to you people, I can't work with you, and you went back to the DP. Actually, anyway, had you left DP to work with them? No. Things like that. Okay. When we get back from the break, we will look at your service with the NRM. Then, how you see things today? You are welcome. Thank you so much. Mm. For you watching, if you dare get off this show, <laughs> it will be you to blame. We have the man himself, first-hand information. He won the 1980 elections, and he believes because he has a number of facts with him. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy this very short break. Don't go anywhere.